Hi guys, it is a frosty winter night here <coughs> in mid-October under the, uh, is it the hunter moon that we're seeing tonight, uh, The I think the biggest moon of the year here on Wednesday, October 16th, 2024. So the little dog who is under the covers and I have been, uh, what have we been doing today? We have been keeping on with the ongoing mouse wars here and the collapse of everything. Getting ready to head back to the great state of Florida in a couple of weeks. So, uh, few more chronicles of the collapse here from Bugs in a Jar Farm. <clears throat> so guys, I swear I remember doing this video a, a couple of weeks ago from this fellow Paul, I guess, Abella, A-B-E-L-A on uh, medium.com, came out on October 2nd. I meant to do a video on it, then I guess uh, Eric Michaels and Richard Heinberg kind of got in the way. So Medium.com, for the second time, has put out this article. So I guess I cannot ignore it. So we're going to call this, uh, we're going to call this Ecolo Ecological Overshoot 101 for Dummies, because basically what Collapse Chronicles is, is trying to educate people about ecological overshoot, which is pretty much too many people eating too much stuff. Uh, so this is Paul Abella's excellent overview essay for people trying to figure out what the collapse of everything is all about. What is ecological overshoot, and why is it so controversial? Whether it's by design or disaster, our voyage into overshoot will inevitably come to an end. Yes, it will. It will inevitably come to an end. question is when. This is a, I'll put the link to you for you folks who can still get this. I'm, um, uh, th this is a long article, so I, I'm, I'm going to skip over the stuff about the reindeer herd on the island. I, I, anybody, any doomer who hasn't heard about the reindeer herd, uh, put in reindeer herd on the island, and we're going to skip over that stuff about the reindeer, and we're going to talk about humans. All right. Uh, did you, uh, did you realize that, uh, that, I mean, th th this is real. I, I, guys, I, I understand for people listening to this channel, this is pretty ABC stuff. Uh, did you realize that this planet has boundaries? This may be a glaringly obvious point to make, but the idea that the Earth is limited by those boundaries is one of, if not the most, controversial facts there is. Boundaries hit at the fact that never-ending economic growth on a finite planet may not be possible. Uh, do you think so, Paul? Seeing as economic growth has led to miraculous increases in living standards, to question it is heresy. But high living standards for some have come with a horrifying cost for all of us ecological overshoot. While ecological overshoot is not a phrase you often hear in conversation, how many 
times have I heard the word ecological overshoot in conversation. We first entered it, meaning we first entered ecological overshoot in the 1970s. <clears throat> so, what exactly is ecological overshoot? And why is it so controversial? And I'm a little bit embarrassed with Paul talking about the uh, the the reindeer herd. I, I'm not going to go over the story of the reindeer herd. I, in population sustainability and Earth's carrying capacity, Gretchen Daly and Paul Ehrlich define carrying capacity as the maximum, quote, population size of a given species that an area can support without reducing its ability to support the same species in the future, close quote. Carrying capacity is influenced by the size of an ecosystem, you know, in this case being the size of a planet, the characteristics of the area and the organisms that live within it. Larger or richer areas like rainforest have a higher carrying capacity than drier, sparser areas like deserts. Similarly, an ecosystem will be able to support a larger population with low energy requirements like lizards than a species with higher energy requirements such as birds, not to mention humans, such as birds who have the same body mass as the lizards. <clears throat> when the needs of a species exceed the capacity of an area, it creates a state of ecological overshoot. And then, of course, we get to the next term in the glossary for the collapse, the Great Acceleration. And for you guys rolling your eyes at me, okay, I understand that for a lot of us, this is kindergarten, but remember, guys, there was a day when you had to learn all this, and, and so I'm speaking to the people coming down into the Doomosphere, uh, fairly new members, trying to figure out this all of this stuff about ecological overshoot, carrying capacity, and now Paula Bella is going to talk about the Great Acceleration the challenge we face today is that we, meaning humans, we have induced ecological overshoot on a planetary scale. This has happened for a few reasons. First, the human population has exploded. How many times have we heard it? Now he goes through this tired old hockey stick at the beginning of the 19th century. After thousands of years, the population hit a billion for the first time, blah, blah, blah. And uh, skipping forward to 2022, uh, the 8 billion milestone was hit and growing at 200,000 every day. An increasing population would not be an issue in and of itself. Well, I don't know about that, Paul. Uh, despite the fact that an increasing population is an issue in and of itself. I'm just doing some creative editing as I go along. This explosion from 1 billion to 8 billion in 120 years has coincided with a feverish increase in 
my two favorite words, human activity. There you go, a feverish increase in human activity known as the Great Acceleration. In the second half of the 20th century, the global economy grew sixfold. I have actually heard a, a lot more than sixfold. He is, he is using the conservative estimate of sixfold. In the second half of the 20th century, the global economy grew sixfold. Between 1950 and 2010, the human population nearly tripled. In 1950, the world produced one million tons of plastics, you know, in the year. Today, we produce around 300 million tons. So, uh, you know, what we produce pretty much every day of the year, the amount of plastic pollution that was produced in the entire year of 1950. And do not forget that in that time, the second half of the 20th century energy consumption tripled. Hmm. Imagine that the human population nearly tripled, and in that time, energy consumption tripled. The number of McDonald's restaurants, I ate at McDonald's yesterday. McDonald's is doing a $2.99 special. They're bringing out the Chicken Big Mac. I enjoyed a Chicken Big Mac at McDonald's yesterday. The number of McDonald's restaurants, an icon of globalization, increased from one McDonald's in America in 1954 to over 36,000 McDonald's in over 100 countries by 2021. Every conceivable thing has increased exponentially. We'll have to run that by uh, Elliot, J Elliot, has a, Elliot Jacobson has a problem with this term exponentially. Every conceivable thing has increased exponentially from air travel to automobiles to telecommunications. The great acceleration has created an avalanche of consumable goods and services that have led to higher living standards. And it is all thanks to increases in production, to increases in production, which have resulted from economic growth, you know, which is increased at twice the rate of population. The issue with growth is that to produce more, you need to make more. So as production has increased, so has the amount of energy and resources we need to achieve those increases. Since the Industrial Revolution, economic growth has led to increasing living standards for many, but higher living standards, too many people eating too much stuff, higher living standards come with a horrifying cost, which brings us to the meat of the matter, ecological overshoot. All right. Are we all following this class? I know that, that, that this is really brain-teasing stuff. All right. More people, 8 billion compared to 1 billion, consuming more stuff, a million tons of plastic every day, as opposed to a million tons of plastic in a year, leads to an increase in our, meaning humanity's, collective 
ecological footprint. The ecological footprint measures how fast we, meaning humans, consume resources and generate waste compared to how fast nature can absorb our waste and generate resources. Every year, the Global Footprint Network uses the ecological footprint to assess if and when our demands on the Earth exceed what Earth can replenish in that year. The graph, you know, all kinds of graphs in this, this story. This graph shows that since 1971, what are we, 53 years ago, something like that, this graph shows that since 1971, the demands we, meaning humans, make on the earth to produce the goods and services we then use to support our lifestyles exceeds what earth can supply. In short, we have been in a state of ecological overshoot for over 50 years. Overshoot has accelerated over time, the great acceleration, as our collective ecological footprint has increased. We now require 1.70 five Earths to provide for our wants and needs as a species. As a species. So, you might wonder what consequences this could mean being an ecological overshoot for over 50 years. The outcome of overshooting an entire planet's carrying capacity is catastrophic. Overshoot has led to a climate crisis. It has led to the annihilation of life on Earth, which is why we are the first species to have ever triggered a mass extinction event. Overshoot has ravaged ecosystems, which is why the Amazon rainforest is now on the verge of dying. The ultimate risk of overshoot is that it will trigger hostile conditions that will make it increasingly difficult to provide for the needs of humanity, and not to mention the needs of every other one of our fellow earthlings we share the planet with. A hostile Earth will translate into weather extremes such as severe droughts, floods, and more ferocious storms. I, did this come out? I think he wrote this even before Helene hit, much less Milton. The outcomes of overshoot will be food shortages, water scarcity, and price spikes, to name a few, a hostile Earth will lead to global unrest, chaos, and, inevit and inevitably increased tensions that will so easily trigger all-out war as countries fight for scarce resources massive loss of life is likely to follow. So now he starts tiptoeing into hopium as he gets near the bottom. So this is Paul Abella's, this is his version of tiptoeing into hopium. Tiptoe through the opium uh, towards the end of his essay. So, how are we going to escape overshoot? Well, some might say keep your pecker in your pants and don't let your knickers down, but Paul has some other comments about escaping 
overshoot, which of course is a contradiction in terms and ain't going to happen. Well, we are, you know, as anyway, back to Paul. The stark reality of overshoot is that the current global economic system cannot be maintained. That makes our global society unsustainable, huh? And that is why it is so controversial to talk about because our entire political system, you know, planet-wide, is based on that not being true. Hmm. When it comes to escaping overshoot, there are two options. We either escape through the, afore, the aforementioned disaster, not a desirable option, or we design our way out. Escaping overshoot by design involves dramatically reducing our ecological footprint. But exactly, but how exactly do we do that? There is a formula that shows us the options we have. Uh, I I anyway, then he goes into the um, the iPad. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to rehash the iPad formula about how screwed we are. Um, the global population is forced to increase to nearly 10 billion people by 2050 and over 11 billion by 2100. Eight. Affluence, meanwhile, is wrapped up in an ev in ever increasing rates of consumption. So the only viable political and economic option to reduce total in environmental impacts is to focus on T, the uh, the environmental impact per unit of product and service consumed. So here's where I'm a little bit, either Paul Abella or Sam Mitchell uh, is confused what the T in IPAT means. I thought that T meant technology. All these years, I have thought T means technology, but according to Paul Abella's reading, of the letter T, the letter T stands for the environmental impact per unit of product or service consumed. So Paul Abella, I have to admit guys, has completely lost me here. All of these years I thought T meant technology but maybe I'm the one, uh, and not Paul, who's misunderstood it. But whoever's right or wrong, let's talk about uh, what he thinks T means. Many companies, you know, we're, we're getting into ain't going to happen territory. Many companies have embraced a whole system design approach known as dematerialization the idea is to make the same product or service with fewer materials. Dematerializing products can induce a rebound effect where an efficiency that reduces the impact per unit of product or service consumed actually ends up increasing the total environmental impact. And for any second grader in the Doomosphere, this is the Jevons paradox part of the collapse of everything. This can happen for a few reasons. If a product is cheaper to produce, the company 
can then sell it at a lower price, encouraging more people to buy it. So, while the price decreases for each unit produced with greater demand for a cheaper product, you know, the impacts increase because, wow, more products are sold. The, re the rebound effect, uh, of course, now, maybe, the rebound effect can get even worse because those who buy the product at a lower price now enjoy savings and can use that disposable income to buy other products. Fundamentally, the problem comes down to an economy that is designed to grow and a society that works in service to that goal. Hmm, thank you, Bob. In the book, Enough is Enough, Rob Ditz and Dan O'Neill show that between 1980 and 2007, the material intensity of the global economy measured as the amount of biomass, mineral, and fossil fuels required to produce one dollar of world GDP decreased, decreased by 33 percent, which is a remarkable achievement. But world GDP grew by 100 41%, not 33% at the same time. So, total resource use still increased by 61%. And, and I know this is where people start, uh, start getting confused uh, 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 about how this whole system, uh, uh, this whole system works. Uh, which has brought us now into a trap of our own making. While efforts to dematerialize products are well intended without questioning the rules of the game, efficiencies just increase productivity, which locks in further environmental impacts. Again, that is why overshoot is so controversial. To exit overshoot by design, we must question the rules of the game. Overshoot feeds into a rather obvious truism revealed by the blue marble photograph, you, you know, the photograph of Earth. Um, infinite growth on a finite planet is impossible, but conventional economics dismisses this idea of limits to growth. It has to be because growth is the beating heart of capitalism. If the economy does not grow, it will collapse. Hmm. Imagine that, Paul. Economic growth and therefore capitalism is unsustainable by design because to continually grow the economy requires continual increases in production. To increase production, you need more inputs of energy and resources. No matter how efficient we make processes, there is no getting around this fact. More growth 
we'll see overshoot accelerate even further. The two are inextricably connected. This is the argument made by post-growth economic theories like degrowth is good, degrowth is good. The central argument of degrowth is that we must reduce the central argument of degrowth is that we must reduce humanity's ecological footprint by scaling down the economy while ensuring well-being is maintained. The challenge with degrowth ain't gonna happen. Gaining widespread support is that decreasing the size of the economy will involve people having to give up elements of consumerism. It will feel like living standards are reducing, and you will end up in a tiny house, a rodent-infested tiny house, freezing your ass off, uh, talking to your imaginary friends in the Doomosphere on YouTube. It, meaning degrowth, would hardly make for a convincing election campaign. Can you imagine Donald Trump or Kamala Harris uh, telling people we need to make sacrifices to defeat ecological overshoot? It would hardly make for a convincing election campaign. Vote for me. Become poorer. Would you vote for such a pledge? Asked Jimmy Carter in his famous sweater speech about that. Uh huh. All right. Uh, would you vote for such a pledge, even if it is claimed reducing consumption will not impact well being? No one will buy into it, which is why this whole unadulterated horseshit conversation you hear from these hopium-soaked apocaloptimists about degrowth, it ain't going to happen. Well, it is going to happen when we hit the limits to growth. It is never going to happen voluntarily. It ain't going to happen. This whole bullshit talk about degrowth is unadulterated, ain't gonna happen, horseshit. We are caught in a trap of our own making. This is nobody's fault. Well, it's everybody's. This is, is it nobody's fault or everybody's fault? The problem we have, though, is that economic growth, it's the economy, stupid, has become so important to society that it is unquestionable as long as society and the economy are designed in service of economic growth, escape from overshoot by design is impossible. It ain't gonna happen. One way or another, the planet will force us out of overshoot if we cannot design our way out. And as he just said, escape from overshoot by design is impossible. Ain't gonna happen. If we cannot design our way out, and we cannot, then disaster is inevitable. We face a fate not dissimilar to that reindeer herd. The difference is we do still have time to do something about it. Yes. Post-growth ideas offer salvation but they must begin to gain traction now.
our survival depends on it. Thank you, Paul Abella, for that cheery note. And uh, I hope uh, we have learned something about uh, ecological overshoot carrying capacity, the great acceleration, and the trap that we have set for ourselves, but the trap I have set for myself is I've come to the bottom of my margarita and uh, I have to go trudge through this cold winter night back to the bar to freshen my drink while I still can. Get out there and freshen your drink while you still can. Bye, guys. Little dog, what do you think about ecological overshoot, the great acceleration, and the trap we have set for ourselves? This is Sancho Panza in a major anxiety attack. This is Sancho Panza in a major anxiety attack over the trap we have set for ourselves. <laughs> oh boy, that dog. He speaks for the silent majority of clueless fucking Mars. You know, just to be as clueless as Sancho Panza, uh, would not that be a gift? I gotta go make a drink for my anxiety attack. Bye, guys.